Hey folks, welcome back. Tim here, Gamavidi, at work again. I know, but hey, this time we're gonna be a fun one. I'm checking out the new Delta Wing 270 awning from Iron Man 4x4. Uh, they've done some improvements to this thing. Uh, it might be better than the last one you saw, so let's dig into it. You're gonna dig it. So first things first, they uh, they updated the logo, which I like. A little cleaner, got rid of that green guy. I'm all in. Um, nice material here. It's not your typical, uh, you know, what do I want to say? Rubbery coating that you see on most awnings. This is a little bit more like a pair of pair of jeans or flak jacket. So I think that's going to resist scratches probably a little bit more. Um, you know, it might take on dust a little bit sooner, but you know, not a huge huge deal. Um, anyway, appearance looks great. Back of the awning has a you know, nice smooth powder coat finish on the standard aluminum uh, channel extrusion. Same spacing as we see on all, basically all, a lot of the 270s this size, you know, OVS, 230, etc. Uh, I'm using our rack receivers, of course, because I like the quick on off. I like the low uh, install height, uh, but that does come with some three brackets or two brackets. And again, they're the standard bracket that you see in all awnings of this size now and it has one of my favorite awning features which is a generously sized bag so let me unzip this i'll show you what i'm talking about velcro here Right here is a bag, kind of like a shoe bag for a roof tent. Comes down and it holds the cords for the lights. We'll see the lights in a minute. It holds your straps, uh, holds all your tie downs and stakes. Pretty clever how they gave that to you. Uh, and then it hooks up to the awning. When I asked Iron Man specifically, I said, hey, well, can I shove that up into the case? They said, no, you can't. Okay, well, I did it, so sorry, but um, I gotta try, right? So I have the inside kind of the center strap here so when i loosen this pull the awning down this bag now comes down and then i can slide it back over to you know not in front of the back door which is a more reasonable position for that thing so i like it first awning since the batwing that i've seen that really gives you a nice pouch for everything and allows you to put it up in there even if they said don't do that so just show you what's in there real quick. Uh, it comes with instructions for a 180 degree awning, which I don't have or, or want. Um, top shelf, bunch of wires for the lighting, middle shelf, bunch of ropes, and bottom shelf. Um, these are my tie downs for deploying the awning. So let's do that. And there we go. Set up, no legs. Let's check this thing out though. Of course, here's your warnings. You know, only designed to be self-destroy, self-supporting during pack up and tear down. If it's windy, put it away or put the legs down or put some guy lines down. I think that's good practice for a lot of awnings, but you know, it looks really nice. Nice thick material here that definitely blocks light. You know, it's kind of cool here, but I know this shades really well um, and then the legs are all integrated so I'm gonna flip these guys down so kind of clever little straps to hold the legs on and then the legs actually go into the body of the arms here so they have a little hole or a little home for it so kind of nice um, these are the same poles that come on OVS awnings a little bit different powder coating but the uh, you know the top hinge is that same ball and socket that you used to see and so I'll show you in a minute how to how to live with those things. Pull that one down. I got 
to compress it to get it out of the hole. Pull this guy down. I might have cornered myself a little bit. You know, this one will be no problem. If I can get it out of there. There we go. But back here, it's a little bit more difficult because, well, get you a little closer, I'll show you. Here's my back leg and uh, it's sandwiched, it's right on top of my rack. Now, part of this is my fault because I put the rear hinge in that location. Um, to avoid that, I could have brought it, you know, outside or behind the rack, but I really wanted this shade because it's right on the top of my hatch here on the GX. And if I bring this out another couple of inches, um, it's gonna be a lot more sun shining through that crack if I have it set up that way. And I normally do uh, potential for a little bit more rain. So I wanted it a little bit further up so I can work with that. I'll show you how I do it. It just takes another second. So what I need to do is loosen the rope that's holding it tight. Essentially put it away a little bit just to get me the clearance to flip that leg down and then cinch it all back up. So stay with me here. So I did it. Not sure if you caught all that, but I <laughs> loosened the awning, freed the leg. I had to swing it down and then out around the door, around the tire, and then we're back on the ground. So all doable. I'll go ahead and tighten up this strap. Okay, now we're back to awning mode. And to be clear, that's the case with any awning with legs, right? So that's not exclusive to Iron Man here. It's just, just chose this video to show you how to deal with that. So that comes up all the time. Of course, if you have a forerunner, life's harder for you. Um, 200 series, similar, you know, any of those hatches with the big whale on them, you're gonna have to deal with that on a 270. Uh, and a lot of people go into 180s for that reason because they just don't want to. Usually I've been able to make it work by pulling the hatch down, deploying the awning, and then just push the hatch right up into it. Uh, but hey, that's how it goes. So I want to talk about these ropes here because I actually, I really dig it. They, I got two of them because as you saw, that kit was for the 180. So it has, you know, two sets of hinges, two ropes. I only need one, but it gives me a chance to show you the other one. It's kind of nice. It's got a little uh, kind of a cam deal where you, you can pull on one thing to make it tight. And it's automatically cinched and then it's got a little release lever in there you just pull that up with your finger and then you can let your your slack out so really really slick this is nice and tight right now if i want to release the tension i just put my finger up there and ah, where are you there you go there it goes just push it up now this is loose and then to tighten it again so that's cool that's cooler than well all the others i'll stop naming them that's pretty cool show you something on these legs and again same exact uh, components as OBS uh, it's a little ball and socket joint and you can pull it sideways and just and you can free it up and there's a little ball you know there's a little socket on the OBS awnings where you half of the flip down legs are integrated with the arms the other half are in a bag uh, basically you flip this around you stick that in in a hole and then that ball just goes against the ground on those additional legs. The other ones flip down just like that. Uh, what's funny there is your muscle memory has to flip because when you go one way, it's righty tighty. The other way, it's like lefty tighty. And so you, you'll get it, but you're going to get, you might get frustrated by that. that. Not this awning though. These are all the same. These are all in the same direction. What I do want to point out is this plastic piece is just threaded in there. And as you are using these awnings over time, uh, it can loosen up. And so you're, you'll go to a uh, let me pull that vertical again. Sorry, it came out. Okay. So you'll go to, you know, tighten it, loosen it, and this will start twisting. And what I've done is I have then gone to put it away. And because that ball wasn't going in the opening, it actually snapped the ball off. So I've got a couple of these sticks without that. Something to just be aware of using this kind of a leg. Um, hopefully you don't have an issue. Just kind of pay attention. And the stakes and the ropes are pretty standard, you know, typical 
Jay Bolt looking guy there. And uh, you know, the rope with the cinch thing, no, nothing new there. I really wish they'd give us a base with a hole in it so you can stake this down. Batwing has done that really well, even though in a huge wind, you can actually rip that foot out of the bottom, but I think we can do better. I might just have to develop that product because I think that would make this a better product. And in light winds, you wouldn't have to worry about any of these guy lines. So just think about that. Uh, but yeah, good stuff here. Totally fine quality. Put these ropes. So there's one over every pole. There's also one between every pole. Basically the ones on the poles are really for wind to keep it down. The ones in the middle are a little bit, but the middle ones are really to give it a sag to let water drain out of there. I, I think that's the intention there. Um, you know, again, if it gets really windy, the more mo uh, ropes, excuse me, more ropes you can do. Um, I will give you two tips on these ropes. One is just permanently tie a couple to your awning and then find a way when you put it away to just kind of leave those already tied. Then they fall right down and it's just so obvious that it's right there. It's so easy to set up the next time. Uh, it just might get lucky and it gets windy and you already had a, a guy line out. So second tip I'd give you is you're not constrained to the stakes. So you can tie off to a tree, another vehicle, or even your own vehicle. Um, I've done this a bunch of times where I'll just bring a rope back and uh, loop it around the back of the slider here and then kind of sitch it down. And, you know, here we are. So this, that rope is nice and snug. This, I can't push it up on it because it's tied down, but I don't have a rope out here that I'm tripping on. Now, of course, I have a rope there I'm tripping on if I need to get into that back door. So you, you know, kind of have to plan ahead, but you know, that was a lot easier sometimes than, than pounding into solid rock. So nice little option to have kind of in your, in your tool bag there. Let's check out these lights. So you get a wire harness and on this one, I, I kind of cut it in half and I cinched up half of this because I have a really long lead to, you know, what's a USB plug. So presumably I can go anywhere in this vehicle I want. We'll do that in a second. But then out here, these are all the leads to go to the lights themselves. Um, this is obviously a harness for another awning or multiple awnings because they give you a long length for two of these. Um, I'll just show that to you. I'll take my little twisty off here. Do -do -do. And, uh, so here's two of the leads and then here's the other two leads, but I don't need all this slack. Uh, all four could have been this long because all the plugs are just right up here in the hinge. So anyway, they save a little money by, you know, finding a harness they are already had or, you know, consolidate part numbers. I mean, I'm all about that, but you know, so I ended up tying all this thing back and I'm going to end up doing that before I put it away. So just something to notice there, um, but kind of clever. They're just magnetic. And uh, you just pop them into these little spots and they stay there. And so there's two. You find yourself a, uh, you know, any old USB power source. Great job for one of these little power stations here. Plug that in there. And then there's a switch. Should be able to hit go. And, uh, and now we have light. And it's got a little dimmer. So I can have less light or I can have more light. Might bring this out again when it gets darker here. Um, kind of clever, kind of neat. I didn't have to set up lights, right? I just had to set up this little wire harness. That's pretty cool. One color, you know, doesn't have amber, doesn't have red, you know, no, no pink, no pineapple. So um, white is it, but hey, white works and it kind of gets the job done. I'm not usually a, a leave the lights on all night kind of person, but I am a, if I got to find something, let's find it right now kind of guy. So I think this works really well for me. Yeah, coming from the future. Here we are with the lights. So, kind of cool. Lights up the world, right? Where I don't have the pole down, it kind of blocks it. Not sure that's a bad thing. You know, I've got two poles down, two poles not down. Kind of cool. I can come here and, uh, you know, I think I can dim this. So, pretty cool, chill. Yeah, not annoying. Nice low light. Uh, but if I got to figure something out or get something done, you know, we can crank it up. So lights are pretty cool. 
And let's just take another look at these hinges as this is always a focal point. So, uh, you know, a nice big plate. Oh, just knocked off some, some light wires. Um, nice big, you know, bracket here. Uh, this is maybe 13 sixteenths. Uh, it's probably four millimeter material. So good thing is they have these extrusions that are now wrapped in uh, what appears to be, a, you know, a segment of a, of a thicker aluminum extrusion. So kind of a nice reinforcement there. Uh, I'm not going to do a pull up on it, but, but certainly, you know, this is made for what they claim it to be, which is, you know, self-supporting during setup and takedown only. Um, I think pretty nice job with the hinge. So yeah, nice material, nice hinge, know how to work the poles. It's got some lights in it. Pretty cool. So to put it away, you know, you got your first step now is uh, put all these wires away. It's nice you can just kind of yank on those and pull them out of your power supply. And then all that's going to neatly get wadded up and put into one of your little uh, zipper bags here. It is kind of nice. They, they labeled these. You know, this one's got a little stake on it. This one's got a little rope and this one has a little light bulb to tell me where things are. That's, that's kind of nice. It also had a couple of those little carabiners on these top eyelets. And I just took those off and I, I just strapped it directly to uh, the straps that come with it. It was just, a, to me, a needless thing in the chain that just didn't need to be there. So to continue putting this away though, you know, we'll get all of our ropes together, zip these up. And as I rolled this up, I, I tried to make it as flat as I could. So I kind of put the bottom one between the top and middle and then just kind of brought it up like that. And then I'm going to bring it over there and, and literally cinch it with this strap. So I'll wrap that up again because I, you know, it doesn't really matter until I get the awning put away. So on all the legs, you take those down, you're just going to loosen your slack on the uh, pole there. And then you got the little hole, you can kind of stick it in. That's kind of nice. And then you bring a little strap around. So do that for all four legs. Go take off that rope on the other side, swing it around and start buttoning it up. So be right with you. So you get a butt button this up and you really want to get as many folds out of these pieces as possible. So it's, it's kind of like three big triangles and I've had better luck kind of fold it like this and fold it like this. Then I have folding it like this and then fold it like this and fold it like this. It just, this usually gets a little bunchy in the middle, but, but try it both ways. Cause I don't know that there's a right way. Uh, the right way is the one that gets the zipper closed. So try it like this guy, like, like that, like that. And then I'm going to take this front strap and reach back up there and find the other loop and pull that down. Now, I like to say this is your feedback. If I can get every bit of this soft Velcro through that loop and stuck to that, you know, the hard side, I know that zipper's gonna close. But if you see this where I can barely get this through, and there's no way, then I know I'm, I'm way too bunchy there. So I, I gotta reassess. So let me try this again. So same method, right? I, I, but I just rolled it up a little bit better. And you see how that flap went all the way through that loop there, tight to the Velcro, I know it's going to work. So stay with me. Here comes the best part. Just slide this over to where it's in the middle of my strap. Make sure that my top strap is ready to go. I'm going to loop my bag up, get the strap through it, and just put my bag right there. And then I'm going to strap that whole works right up there. Just like that. Close the cover. Still got my ropes on, but I don't care. I'm gonna take my zipper. Oh. 
we go. Zip this up. I'm gonna take my ropes and I'm just gonna shove them in there. I'm good to go. And when I go to unzip that again, those ropes are just gonna fall right down in front of me exactly where I want them to be. And that's kind of the show. So yeah, new Delta Wing 270 from Iron Man 4x4. Sets up nice, goes away really nice. You can integrate the bag for the sticks and the ropes. Maybe put some other things in there, you know, forks or lighters, or I don't know, whatever you're into, go for it. Um, the lights are kind of cool, you know, I, yeah. I'm gonna try the lights out tonight. I'm, you know, I'm at a nice spot. We'll try it out. And I'm gonna run this thing for a little bit. So next time you see me at an event, feel free to check it out. Of course, let me know your questions, you know, email or on here. Let me know what else you wanna see in these videos, as well as products. And I will see you on the next one.